Hey, welcome back to the Lamentations of Jeremiah. We're looking today at verses 7 to 9. Here's our reading. In the days of her affliction and roaming, Jerusalem remembers all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy. With no one to help her, the adversaries saw her and mocked at her downfall. Jerusalem has sinned gravely, therefore she has become vile. All who honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yes, she sighs and turns away. Her uncleanness is in her skirts. She did not consider her destiny. Therefore, her collapse was awesome. She had no comforter. O Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy is exalted. So here's a picture of Jerusalem. It's a sad picture. The people have been taken away to captivity, most of them. And the picture that is the way the prophet gives it, in the days of her affliction and roaming, Jerusalem remembers all her pleasant things. It's a very sad kind of a picture. Here sits this city, this, this remarkable city, also sad and lonely and desolate. In verse 7, it says there's no one to help her. They feel very alone. They feel very helpless. God is not helping them, although sort of he is. We'll be talking about that. But he's helping her by helping her come to herself. He's helping her by helping her come to a place of repentance that she was unable to come to on her own. In spite of, in spite of God sending his prophets and his servants, she just seemed like she couldn't get there. So now she's going to have time to think about things. Like when somebody goes to prison, suddenly they have time to rethink things. They have a little bit a different scheduling arrangement in their life. And so Jerusalem has this. There's no one to help her. The adversaries saw her downfall. They mocked. She feels very set upon. When it says all her adversaries saw her, I'm, I'm quite, it's quite likely that underneath this is the Hebrew word Satan. That's where we get the word Satan, the name, the name for the arch deceiver, Satan. It literally in the Hebrew, it means adversary. And so the adversaries saw her, the Satans saw her and mocked at her downfall. When we are operating against God's people, we're actually operating in that situation of the Satan, the adversary. Verse 8 is important because we see that Jerusalem admits admitted she sinned gravely. It's an important piece that we see in the book of Lamentations that we very rarely see in the book of Jeremiah. This idea that the people are, there is a degree of repentance finally, finally blossoming now. And then we have, again, the despising. People are despising her. She feels very alone. Uh, I thought verse 9 was especially interesting in our reading too. She did not consider her destiny, therefore her collapse was awesome and she had no comforter. So when you don't realize that your actions, your own actions are putting you into a place where the God of heaven can't bless you and in fact where he even says I'm going to be I'm going to be opposed to you. I'm going to be against you. When you're coming and operating that way with the God you've made a covenant with, uh, what do you expect? But now there's the very beginnings here of some actual repentance, these last people in the kingdom of Judah. She had no comforter, it said. She felt like God was not there to help her, but God is helping her. It's just, it's just the hard medicine. It's like you don't have to do it this way. You don't have to slam your head into a brick wall at 90 miles an hour uh, to get some sense knocked into you. You can actually do it in a much wiser way by submitting to the Lord of heaven and earth and starting there. Well, a lot of times we don't start there, but you know what? However we get there, we need to come to that place of repentance. Important lesson from this today. It's a consequence of our own behaviors. It's a consequence of our own sinning that uh, where God is seemed to be in opposition to us. We need to recognize that and then receive his help to change our behaviors. Well, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for each and every glimmer of repentance that you give to your people. Lord, be our helper, watch over us, and as you help the people in the day of Jeremiah, will you please help us in our day, when in our spots of blindness, show us, help us to see, and help us to come closer to you and be stronger in repentance. And Lord, thank you that you can help us understand that it's, it's our own, the reason we're at odds with you, it's not because of you, it's because of us. Help us to see it, and change our path, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that's all for today. God be with you there, and hopefully we won't have as many laments today as we serve the Lord of heaven and earth.